This video is brought to you by Nebula. Today, the US and EU attempt to dissuade Israel from retaliating against Iran. One of Donald Trump's major trials kick off, and UK MPs vote on a smoking ban. From TLDR News, this is your daily briefing for Tuesday the 16th of April 2024. Western leaders are attempting to dissuade Israel from retaliating against Iran, after Iran fired more than 300 drones, missiles and rockets towards Israel on Saturday. The US Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, and UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak have both said Western countries are preparing sanctions against Iran, with Blinken adding that the US is coordinating a diplomatic response to seek to prevent escalation. For context, Iran's strikes against Israel come a couple of weeks after Israel struck the Iranian consulate in Syria, killing seven of Iran's senior military commanders. Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, has vowed retaliation, saying Israel must be punished. And then, late last week, US intelligence reported that Israel was preparing for a direct attack within 24 to 48 hours. Then, on Saturday night, Iran's Revolutionary Guard Corps, or IRGC, launched 170 drones and 30 cruise missiles, plus at least 110 ballistic missiles, into Israeli territory. However, almost all of them were shot down by Israel, the US, the UK, France and Jordan, with only one seven-year-old girl injured by shrapnel. Now, since then, Israel's war cabinet has been weighing retaliation, having met twice in 24 hours. However, it's reportedly divided on how and when to act. Israel's army chief Herzi Halavi said Iran's attacks would be met with a response, while the IDF spokesperson Daniel Hagari said Israel would protect the state, quote, at the time and in the way we choose to do so. Meanwhile, Western countries are calling on both countries to avoid further escalation. Sunak is expected to speak to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu later today, while Belgium, France and Germany have all summoned their Iranian ambassadors amid mounting pressure on Tehran. Israel's foreign minister has also written to 32 countries demanding they impose sanctions on Iran, which has insisted it still does not want regional escalation. There's more on the way, but remember to subscribe and ring the bell for more daily briefing tomorrow. Plus, if you want to support the channel like Jellybones, then consider joining the new TLDR membership program for just $1.99. Monday saw the beginning of the first ever criminal trial of a US president, as a court in Manhattan kicked off the trial of Donald Trump. Trump is charged with 34 felonies, including falsifying business records in relation to the payment of hush money to adult film star Stormy Daniels. Yesterday was the first day of jury selection, something that was always going to be challenging given Trump's notoriety. Judge Juan Merchan immediately dismissed more than half of the first batch of 96 potential jurors after they said that they could not be fair and impartial, and the day ended without any jurors being selected. With this in mind, jury selection could last two weeks or more, with the trial possibly extending into June. Trump himself was in the courtroom and even reportedly fell asleep during proceedings around midday. But before the trial, he spoke to reporters and claimed that the trial was an assault on America and an attack on a political opponent. Judge Merchan also reiterated a gag order barring Trump from attacking witnesses, court officials and their family members. Merchan will hear arguments next Tuesday on a request by the prosecution to fine Trump and warn him of potential jail time for alleged violations of the gag order. This is just one of the unprecedented criminal cases that Trump faces that are all sapping time, energy and resources from his presidential campaign. Moving to the UK now, where MPs are, later, going to be voting on the government's proposed smoking ban. Announced last year at the Conservative Party conference, the tobacco and vapes bill would ban anyone born after 2009 from buying cigarettes. In effect, this means that the age at which people can buy cigarettes would increase each year until, eventually, no one is able to purchase them. The only other country to try such a ban is New Zealand, who introduced the legislation but then repealed it before it had a chance to come into effect. Whether the UK law is introduced all depends on today's vote. While the Labour Party supports the bill, the Conservative Party are giving their MPs a free vote, with some journalists suggesting that as many as 100 MPs could vote against the bill. Reportedly, this could include three government ministers and two former prime ministers. Both Liz Truss and Boris Johnson have voiced their criticism of the bill, 
with the former stating that it's an example of the nanny state in action and the latter describing it as absolutely nuts. We'll update you on this in future episodes as it makes its way through Parliament. Moving to some science news now, where astronomers have discovered a huge black hole only 2,000 light years from Earth. The black hole is named BH3 and is the largest black hole discovered in the Milky Way yet. This cosmic discovery was made by looking at data provided by the European Space Agency's Gaia mission. This space telescope launched in 2013 and aims to compile a 3D map of a billion stars. Using this data, the researchers noticed that one of the stars in the Aquila constellation experienced a bit of a wobble. This suggests that there was an object about 33 times the size of the Sun exerting a pull force on it. As it turned out, this was the BH3 black hole. Speaking about this discovery, Dr. Pasquale Panuzzo, an astronomer and member of the Gaia collaboration at the Observatoire de Paris, said that it's a complete surprise and that it is the most massive stellar black hole in our galaxy and the second nearest discovery so far. He added that we've only seen black holes of this mass with gravitational waves in far away galaxies. With just over 100 days until the beginning of the Paris Summer Olympics, the Olympic torch has been lit in the ancient town of Olympia, Greece, in preparation for a more than 5,000 km journey through Greece, French territories and mainland France. Speaking at the lighting ceremony, the International Olympic Committee's president said, In these difficult times we're living through, with wars and conflicts on the rise, people are fed up with all the hate, the aggression and negative news that they're facing day in and day out. We're longing for something which brings us together, something that's unifying, something that gives us hope. The Olympic flame that we're lighting today is the symbol of this hope. That's not the end of this story either. So if you want to dive deeper into this and other stories, we have an exciting announcement. That's because it was revealed in Variety, no less, that we're building a new product with our partners at Nebula called Nebula News. Let me explain this exciting announcement. In an increasingly polarised and confusing world, it's hard to find news that matters and that you can trust. So every day, the TLDR team curates a selection of videos that matter most in the world right now, handpicking a feed of content which should keep you up to date with everything you need. That means no more overwhelming feeds of news coverage, and instead just the stories that matter most. Videos produced by the brilliant creators on Nebula and curated by the TLDR team. It's truly the easiest way for you to keep on top of the news that matters to impress at your next wedding, dinner party, or whatever your life entails. It's not just curated news content brought to you directly by us. Nebula also features exclusive original content. That's things like Real Life Law's brand new series War Room, which every month runs you through a whole load of ongoing conflicts, keeping you in the loop. You can also watch every TLDR video on Nebula ad-free, and in many instances before they land on YouTube. Now, if you're already subscribed to Nebula, you can find the brand new Nebula news section at nebula.tv forward slash news, and be sure to bookmark or save that link so you can use it as your TLDRified news homepage. If you're not a member already, then click the link in the description to sign up now. If you do, you'll get 40% off an annual plan by using our link. That's less than £2 a month. Plus, Nebula will know that you came from us, which really helps us out. Thanks for your support, especially when we're doing something so big and new. And we hope you love Nebula News.